Our millennial panel is here to weigh in. Contributor to The Hill, Rochelle Ritchie, Democratic strategist, Jonathan Harris, and senior vice president of the America Rising Corp, Alexandra Wilkes. Thank you all for being here this morning. Good Appreciate morning, it. Right. All right, Jonathan, what is the draw to socialism? I think for millennials specifically, we kind of came of age at a time where the economy was collapsing. And I think we kind of felt robbed of kind of the other end of the deal, which was we go to school, we're on track, according to Pew Research, we're on track to be the most educated generation in the history of the country. So it's you go to school, you get your education, and then you come out and there's a job to help you pay that off. Instead, we got stuck with debt. We don't have uh, careers at the same pace at pre as previous generations. So I think that's the draw. It's like, okay, the system didn't work. It failed us. So let's change the system. Let's change it to something that's more successful for us. But Alexandra, you look at socialism and you look at specifically, because it's been in the news a lot lately, what it's doing in Venezuela. Is that the answer for the United States? Well, see, that's the problem, I think, with this younger generation is that they don't see socialism for what it is, which is history's failure. Um, I think that for younger people, they look to Scandinavia, um, you know, and obviously there's no correlation with the United States, a far more diverse and larger place uh, where these ideas would wreak havoc on our great economy and our great system of governing. So, you know, I think that they see it as a system of fairness and not as a system of failure. And so it's up to us as conservatives to, to educate. And look, let's look at these numbers here and look at this poll and the views about capitalism and socialism, ages 18 to 29. And you can see here, 51% of people in 2018 have a positive view of socialism. And you look at 45% uh, having a positive view of capitalism. Um, Rochelle, when we're talking about socialism, obviously a lot of people think of Bernie Sanders. He mm -hmm. kind of paved that way. But now you look at the candidates for the 2020 presidential election, the candidates in the Democratic Party, a lot of them are kind of going that way, even though some of them, Kamala well, Harris the other day, right, she said, backtracked. You know, I'm not a Democrat Right, socialist. and I think that was good for her. She backtracked on that because I don't think that socialism is attractive to all Democrats. I'm a registered independent. Obviously, I have more moderate um, Democratic views, but I think the reason that Bernie Sanders appeals to these young people is because of the fact that they, they have uh, skyrocketing student loan debt. So they're pretty much having to live at home with their parents because they don't make enough money at their current jobs to move out on their own and afford health care. The the problem, however, that I have with socialism is that eventually the money does run out. And we have to think to ourselves, if, if we have policies in which the rich are going to be taxed, what do we think these say the, you know, with a free tuition, what do we think that these universities are going to do? They're going to raise the cost of tuition and eventually the money is going to run out. It's hard and to I think imagine that, tuition being more expensive. I know, it's so really hard, it's really but, but it will, it but it will, it'll be, it'll be inflated as a result of socialism. But I think also that there is a connection between Trump supporters and Bernie Sanders supporters. Of course, politically, they are different. But I think that people Trump, uh, people were attracted to Trump because of his sort of radical ideas. He, he campaigned on the fact, I'm not a D.C. politician. I'm going to drain the swamp. Box and Bernie it. Sanders okay. sort of does the same thing, where he goes very radical to the left, and I that's attractive both, to millennials. Ahead, I think they both want to reject the status quo. I think that's really the only thing right, they have in exactly. common. I think they both don't like the status quo. They both recognize that it didn't work for some of the you know interior parts of the country any more so than it works for millennials in many in many situations. But I mean, I think other than that, it kind of He's going to have a problem there's with a, the black vote. There's an though. inclusiveness in That's going to be a serious problem uh, for Bernie ahead, Sanders. Alexandra. Here's the problem is that with Bernie Sanders, you know, he came onto the scene in 2016 and was this great credible alternative to Hillary Clinton for a lot of Democrats. Now, though, you have a lot of Dem Democratic candidates like Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris and Kirsten Gillibrand, who very quickly after 2016 adopted a lot of Bernie-like positions, and they they enjoy something that Bernie Sanders at this point in the Democratic field do, uh, does not, which is intersectionality. Um, and he sort of fails on that test as the old white guy in the room. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see, you know, if, if, if this still translates. But he's really going to have an issue with the black vote, because if we look at what happened in 2016, he lost 14, he only got 14 percent of the black vote compared to Hillary Clinton's 86 percent. That was 57 points that right. he lost. And so he's going to have a yeah. fight. They make up 20 percent of the Democratic Party. Party. So he's really going to have to do a better job at reaching those voters. I'm curious about 10 seconds for each response, and I'm curious everyone's take. When you look at the field of Democrats, it is wide right now and, and continuing <laughs> to grow. A lot of people in the Democratic Party are leaning towards more socialist right. 
you know, type ideas, type mentality. What does that do for younger voters who are up and coming? What does that do to the generations that are going to be voting in the next couple of years? Alexander, I'll start with you. Well, look, I think that, you know, it sort of sets the wrong tone with the Democratic Party from the beginning because there's all of these pie in the sky ideas that don't have any uh, grounding in facts or economics. Um, and so I think that there, you know, once it, the, the truth is revealed, like when Kamala Harris right. admitted that she's going to abolish private insurance, uh, it, it becomes stickier for them. Got to Quickly, I would just Jonathan. say very quickly, it's it's they're they're grounded in facts. I mean, everything from Medicare to Medicaid to Amtrak runs on the ideas of democratic socialism. It's not radical. It's not new. And and many other industrialized nations in the in the world have done this. It does work. And I think it's a good thing for you. Ah, some people are you. It doesn't work. <laughs> Rochelle, go ahead. Really quickly, I just think that whoever uh, is the democratic nominee, I think that they should be focused on uh, a system where people are put in positions of power and not dependency. Okay. Thank you all for joining us this morning. We Thank appreciate you. a good conversation. Thank you. We're coming right back.